Hey everyone, I'm back and I know what you're thinking. I know you read the title and I know that you most likely clicked because you hate John Walker, but hear me out here. Today we're talking about The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. The show was just wrapped up and I thought it was a very satisfying and enjoyable show. I really liked the characters, the themes, the story, and I thought the plot was simple yet enjoyable. I'll touch more on what I enjoyed about the show in a moment. Today we'll be discussing John Walker. Now I know what you're probably thinking. We finally get Sam Wilson as Captain America and you're talking about John Walker in a video essay? And to that I say, yeah, I'm talking about John Walker. Everyone is talking about Sam Wilson as Captain America right now, and that's great. Sam's an exceptional character played by an exceptional actor who deserves all the love he's receiving, but I wanted to do something different. So now you're probably thinking, okay, if you're not going to talk about Sam, why not talk about Bucky? What about Zemo, Isaiah Bradley, Sharon Carter, literally anyone else? And yeah, they're good characters, but they're all receiving a lot of love right now. I wanted to talk about someone who's deserving a lot more love than he's receiving. Don't worry, I'll still talk about the other characters. So today, we'll be talking about John Walker by focusing on a few different topics. How John Walker represents America today, John Walker's character, and US agent. But before we get into that, let's talk about what I thought of the show altogether. I loved it. Simple as that. The story was nothing grand, but I still found it very enjoyable. I'm not going to dig far into the story, but I'd like to discuss other characters for a little bit. Okay, Sam Wilson. I've always loved Sam Wilson. I've always seen him as an enjoyable character, and I've always wanted him to take up the mantle of Captain America. I think the speech that he gives in the final episode was fantastic, inspirational, and very fitting for today. I love his new suit. I think it's cool that it has a lot of white, considering white represents purity on the American flag, showing that Sam is a pure captain. I don't really know what else to say. The boat stuff was cool, it really added some depth to his character, and I cannot wait to see more of Sam in his new upcoming Captain America movie. Alright, Bucky. I was never really a huge Bucky fan. I found his character to be somewhat shallow in one note, but holy shit this series turned him around. I really enjoyed his emotional journey to recovery, him making amends, and his dynamic with Sam. Sebastian Stan, as always, does a killer job with the character, especially in the Wakanda flashback scene. Alright, next, let's talk about Zemo. Zemo has always been my favorite Marvel villain. I think that he is a very interesting character. I love that he's a threat to our heroes, even though he possesses no superpowers. I really like how they turned his character around in this series and made him more of a protagonist to the plot even though he's still bad. I thought his mask was great, the story was great, and his dancing was amazing. Let's talk about Isaiah Bradley. I really liked this character. I love how he delved into his story and how the shield meant something very different to him. The character of Isaiah Bradley explores very, very important themes of racial injustice. I think it's great that the writers didn't just hint at it, rather they went all in. I think his ending was one of the most heartwarming moments in the entire show, maybe in the entire MCU. I loved Isaiah Bradley. If I could, I'd make a whole video just on him, but sadly, I don't think we've seen enough of him. Okay, Sharon Carter. I knew Sharon Carter was the power broker ever since she first came on screen. I kinda got a feeling for what they were doing by reversing some roles. For example, Zemo, who was previously an antagonist, served as a protagonist, so it just made sense that they would switch Sharon's allegiance too. But yeah, I thought she was alright. Let's talk about Carly Morgenthau. Oh boy, where do I begin? Listen, I did not like Carly's character whatsoever. I found her to be irritating. Very irritating. I'm not a big fan of how the show tried to justify her actions, especially when she blew up a bunch of people. I found her to be boring, annoying, and rather one-dimensional. That's really all I have to say for her. The actress did a good job, I just think that she was written terribly. Alright, I think I've touched on all the characters. If I missed any, just let me know in the comments. Before we get into our three little chapters, I'd like to talk to you about the Patreon. I know it's early in the video, but I just want to say it now so we don't need to interrupt the discussion. What's one thing that John Walker and my bank account have in common? They're both super unstable. If you'd like to help me stabilize it, consider donating to the Patreon. For only $3 per month, you'll have early access to essays, unscripted movie reviews, your name in the credits, and access to a podcast that's coming soon. If you'd only like to have your name in the credits, there's a $1 tier for that too. But wait, there is something new. For $5 per month, you'll have the golden tag. At the end of every essay, your name will appear in gold while the others will remain the standard color. More perks may be added onto this tier, but this is just if you want to support the channel even more. Also, go follow my Twitter at KYD Films. Alright, without further ado, let's talk about John Walker. One, 
I think it's fairly obvious to see the political tones that are being portrayed in the show. I've seen a lot of people bitching about it online, to which I say, what the fuck do you expect? It's a fucking Captain America based show. Anything involving Captain America is going to involve politics, and I think the political aspects in the show are extremely crucial. Steve Rogers explored the more political side to the MCU, so obviously John Walker is going to do the same thing. And guess what? Sam Wilson is going to do the same thing as Captain America. But anyways, let's get back on topic. How does John Walker represent America today? Well, let's first talk about how Steve Rogers represented the old America. Honest, hardworking, resilient, good, brave, and loyal. Steve Rogers upheld the old fashion values and he was very respectable. John Walker, on the other hand, is portrayed as an arrogant, smug, overly aggressive, ignorant jerk. And look, I don't want to get super political because I hate getting political, but I think it's rather obvious that as a country, America has strayed away from the values that we used to uphold, especially when it comes to our government. I think this point is made very clear by the lack of white in his suit, where Sam's suit is bursting with white details. Details. It shows that he's not a pure Captain America, which is some damn good visual storytelling. And look, I'm not saying John is a bad guy because he's not. He's done a lot of good, inspired a lot of people, and is a brave man. But that's the thing with John Walker. He's always been a strong, tough man. And as a wise man once said, Because a strong man who has known power all his life may lose respect for that power. But a weak man knows the value of strength and knows compassion. I think it's really cool that we're still exploring that theme even though it was introduced 10 years ago. We're still exploring the good man perfect soldier aspect, where John may be the perfect soldier, but he isn't necessarily a good man. And I think this point of John representing America today comes to a head in episode 5. After John kills one of the Flag Smashers in a fit of rage, he's punished by the government, even though he was trained to do just that. John finally recognizes that they made him, and he isn't going to stand for it anymore. It's really great that John eventually notices the flaws and hypocrisy in the system he was representing, and that he changes because of it. But that's a discussion for... Being Cap is the first time I've had the chance to do something that actually feels right. God, imagine how many lives we could have saved that day if we had that Sarah. John Walker was my favorite character in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and I know that's a hot take. I know John Walker was hated by many people, I get that, but there's something you need to understand. John Walker was created to be hated, which ironically made me love him. If you're wondering how on earth I could possibly love John Walker, just remember one of my favorite characters of all time in media is Billy Butcher from The Boys. I really liked the aspect of John Walker becoming Captain America, someone that nobody wanted taking up the mantle of arguably one of the best characters in pop culture. I think there are a lot of things that made John a compelling character. For starters, his need to be loved. John Walker, wherever he goes, needs approval. At least that's how it starts. We see that begin to unravel when he gets treated poorly by Sam and Bucky simply for not being Steve. And that trait completely ends when he's stripped of his title after killing a Flag Smasher. He puts on the suit, makes himself a new shield, and goes back into battle. We see John evolve as a person throughout the show. Walker starts as a man who wants to do the right thing but slowly descends into brutality. Hell, he even tries to kill Sam and Bucky in episode 5. But when it comes down to it, when Walker gets the chance to redeem himself, he takes that chance. John chooses heroism over revenge, he chooses love over hate, he chooses compassion over rage, which makes Sam and Bucky respect him. And I think it's kind of funny because this approval and affirmation from our protagonist is what turns John from a vengeance seeker to a merciful man. I mean, John quite literally says, Mercy bears richer fruit than strict justice. This quote showcases John's character arc being completed, that he was able to move on from his anger, from his rage, past his hatred, and become a hero. I think John's need for affirmation and love is very important for his character. The more he feels rejected by Sam and Bucky, the more unstable he becomes. But once he receives some acceptance from them, he becomes rational and good. So maybe, just maybe, if Sam and Bucky would have accepted him from the beginning, John would have never lost it. Maybe Lamar wouldn't be dead. are about to get weird so when they do we're gonna need a u.s agent john's story concludes in the most satisfying way possible throughout the series we see him battling with the pressure and expectations that come with being captain america which eventually tears him apart 
I think Sam and Bucky act as the audience's voice throughout the series. Though at first John doesn't do anything to warrant any hate, Sam and Bucky dislike him purely because he isn't Steve. We all did that, we all went nuts about there being a new Captain America, and that's how we were supposed to react. It's fairly obvious that we were not supposed to like the character of Walker, we were not supposed to like the idea of someone else becoming the new Captain America, unless it's who Steve chose. John Walker was the character furthest from perfection, which makes him the perfect character. John's whole arc is about identity, becoming your own person, he was a square trying to fit into a circular hole. He wasn't trying to be Steve Rogers, he was trying to be the best Captain America he could be, and while that doesn't sound bad, that just doesn't work. Steve's values, morality, and virtues are what made the title of Captain America honorable. If John is trying to be Captain America, but not Steve, then he's doing it wrong. This is why Sam works as a better Captain America, he shares Steve's values. John was never meant to be Captain America, he didn't fit the part, which is why it's so satisfying when he becomes US agent. He finally makes his own path instead of trying to fit into someone else's slot. He finds his own identity, and that's what the show is really about, in my opinion. This show, to me, is about identity, whether it's finding out who you really are or losing who you once were, it's about the characters. It's about Carly slowly losing her humanity. It's about Bucky trying to find his place in the world without Steve. It's about Sam becoming the symbol he was meant to be. It's about John learning to value mercy over strict justice. It's about you. It's about who you choose to be and the impact you choose to have over the world. I know a lot of people still hate John Walker for killing one of the Flag Smashers in Episode 4. I get that. Nobody wants to see Captain America killing brutally. It goes against the character's morals. But here's the thing. We needed to see it. With Steve Rogers, we undeniably saw one of the most human heroes. We saw his empathy, his forgiveness, his love, and his loyalty. But whether you love him or hate him, John Walker displays just as much humanity, just in a different way. Walker displays the darker side to humanity, rage, insecurity, pride, and revenge. We're all human, we're all capable of doing what Walker did, but the beautiful thing about this show is the message that comes with John Walker. A message that it's not too late, that you can still be redeemed. His character shows that no matter what you've done, you can still make the right choice, and that ultimately, mercy bears richer fruit than strict justice. So yes, I loved this character, I loved his story, I loved his personality, and I loved his motives. I loved everything about him, and in my eyes, he's the best character in this show, and in my opinion, John Walker is a perfect character.